start in, let's start in the seat. And you can bring one shin in front of the other. I'll spotlight to make sure you guys can see. Perfect. I'm gonna go with no music today since I'll have a few more words or instruction to talk about today. So as you have one shin in front of the other, go ahead and sit up nice and tall here. So think about the bottom tips of your shoulder blades drawing down, the top of your head rising, or even the base of your neck rising, whatever feels like a tangible sort of visual that you can apply just to feel that length through all three curves of your spine. So your low back, your mid back or in between your shoulder blades, and then the back of your neck. Keep that length here and take a full breath in. Open up your mouth. Do that one more time. Breathe all the way into the top. All the way to the bottom. Get totally empty of breath. And then use your next inhale to sit up nice and tall, even taller. And then your exhale, drop your chin towards your chest, but stay broad across the collarbones if you can. And then roll your right ear over to the right. Get into the neck a little bit more. And then chin back to your chest, left ear over to the left. And do that one more time if that feels good. Just a roll to the right. Back through center nice and slow and a roll over to the left. And then back through center, start to lift through the crown of the head, take a deep breath in. One more time just to open up the mouth, sigh it out, and then just switch which shin is in front so we can spend equal time on both. And then sweep the arms out and up, take a deep breath in, you'll rise. Use your exhale just to twist over to the right. So opposite hand to your knee here. And then keep your left hand on your knee, reach your right arm up, face the front. And like you're creating a letter X, cross that right arm on top of the left, just for a moment. And then maybe lift through the fingertips. Now it's early to find eagle arms. If that's too much, just grab opposite shoulders or like wrap them around like you're giving yourself a hug. Take a deep breath in, lift your elbow, maybe even lift your face. And then start to exhale. Now I want you to round here. So almost like the opposite of what I was telling you before, I want you to round through your upper back and notice what happens when we just round through our upper back. Fold from our upper back and then start to rise back up. Take a deep breath in. Unravel the arms, take them out like the letter T, palms facing forward. Take a breath in. To send the back of your hands back, maybe start to squeeze the shoulder blades a little bit closer together. And then use your exhale to bring your hands together in front of your face, but your arms stay long. Start to lift the arms back up, maybe even look up. And then use your exhale to twist over to the left. Yeah, your left hand can come behind you for a moment so you can deepen that twist. And keep your right hand where it is. Reach your left hand up, face the front. And let your left arm come on top of the right, like the letter X. Lift your fingertips up. You can wrap the hands for eagle arms or grab opposite shoulder. Take a breath in to lift through the elbows, maybe even lift through the face. And then rather than hinging at the hips, I want you to round through the upper back. Think like cats in the upper back. So you're just sending your hands, your forearms away from your face. 
And you might get like a juicy stretch in between your shoulder blades, but notice what that feels like. And then rise back up. Unravel the arms, take them out like the letter T, palms forward. Now back of the hands, draw back to open the chest. And then exhale, bring the hands together. They arms stay long in front of your face. Interlace the fingers and flip your palms forward. And then let them rise above your head. Take one more breath in, maybe look to your fingers. And then exhale, release. Come to hands and knees, tabletop pose. So with all of that space in the shoulders and the neck, you start to turn the lower body on and focus on that just a little bit more. So take a few rounds of cat cow, whatever feels good. Maybe even lateral movements side to side. Thinking of that C curve in both directions. And then meet me in downward facing dog. So really place the hands firmly as you tuck the toes and lift your hips up and back. And you can bend one knee at a time, maybe lengthening the opposite leg out. So letting the back of the legs start to just stretch here. So you might notice that this isn't really like super active, but we're just creating a little more length. Now bend both knees about 10%, even more if you need to. And then think about your tailbone drawing a little bit further up towards the sky. Because technically you're in a forward fold here, right? Take one more big breath in and then start to walk your hands back towards your feet, towards the back of your mat. Now, heel toe your feet a little bit wider. I want you to really take this stance wide. Bend your knees even more. Now think about your belly and your thighs just like match together here. And take a breath in, think a halfway lift from here. And then exhale, refold and let your head drop. Bend your knees even more to find that release. Shake your head, yes. Shake your head, no. And then slowly start to roll all the way up to standing. Really press down through all four corners of your feet as you rise. So nice. And then heel toe your feet just a little bit closer. They land right under your hips. Palms facing forward. Shrug your shoulders as you inhale. And let them release down your back as you exhale. And bring your hands to your hips here. So we really get to like play with that sort of tilt of your pelvis. Now naturally, like we are all built a little different, right? So Sometimes we have a natural tilt that is anterior, right? So almost like that bowl is already tilting forward. That's okay, right? Or sometimes we'll have a little bit more of a posterior tilt where it tilts back and your pubic bone draws forward or more forward. I want you to find your neutral, right? So your neutral meaning, can you start to find that alignment of your pelvis Soften your knees to let that happen. Don't let them lock. And can at the same time, can you start to thread your front ribs together to keep your belly supporting the length of your spine? So think of that as your neutral. So neutral may not be here, right? Think of neutral as active. We'll call it active neutral rather. So keep that, take a breath in, sweep your arms all the way out and up, big and hand. Pressing down through all four corners of your feet as you exhale, start to take your arms out like that letter T, palms facing forward. Now a breath in to send the back of your hands back, broaden through the chest. And then exhale to bring your palms together, arms stay long in front of your face. So just like revisiting that whole entire movement. You'll reach back up to the sky. I want you to look up 
but keep that engagement of the belly. Now, as you exhale, start to bend your knees a little bit more like you were sitting in the chair, but then at the same time, reach your hands forward, 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 tip through the spine, think belly towards your thighs, and then drop the head, drop the hands and fold. Totally different here. Spread the toes nice and wide. Find a halfway lift, big breath in to lengthen. Try not to round here. Can you send your shoulder blades down your back? Let this be a transition pose. Like we said before, they're important. Take one more inhale, even feel the back of your legs turning on. I know I feel them. And then keep them engaged. Maybe soften the knees even more. Think belly towards your thighs as you fold. Drop the head. So nice. Now walk your hands back to downward facing dog. Walk your hands forward. Soften through the knees just for a moment. Find that same alignment in down dog as you breathe in. Breathe out. Pull forward to a plank pose, but you can drop your knees down. More important to keep that alignment really strong in the belly. Take a breath in to lengthen and then lower all the way down to the ground. And take your hands out a little wider, tent them, and think your elbows stacking right on top of your wrist as your toes point back behind you. Take a breath in to lift through the chest, just a wide cobra here. And then exhale to release towards the earth. We don't wanna to do too many forward folds without a back bend. So let this be your back bend here, rise up, full breath in. Exhale to release back to the earth. One more like that. Inhale, rise up. And then exhale, release. Hands under your shoulders. Start to come to hands and knees. Tabletop pose. Now walk your hands up your thighs. Sweep your arms out and up. Take a deep breath in. Arms out like a T, palms facing forward. Take a breath in, open through the chest. And then exhale, keep the arms long, bring the palms together in front of your face. Flip the palms or interlace the fingers and flip the palms forward this time and then reach them up above your head. Now step your right foot to the front of your mat. So now you're just in the lunge. Do we get to play here a little bit? Press through your hands, let them rise. And then as you exhale, I want you to bring your hands to your hips. Now, oftentimes we think about how deep we can go as the goal, right? And actually, if we just sink into our hips here, we really, we totally like let go of the opportunity to find more strength here, both in the pelvis and in the hamstrings. So rather, I want you to take almost like a 90, 90 degree. So your front leg makes a 90 back leg makes an ID. Now, as you press down through your front foot actively, reach your hands back up to the sky. Now, as you do this, I want you to think about your right heel and your left knee drawing towards one another. Now notice my foot doesn't go anywhere. My knee doesn't go anywhere, but just that starting, that isometric movement of drawing those two together turns both the back of my right leg on and my left hip flexors, my left hip. And you will feel it take one more breath in. Can they draw together even more? Maybe even look up. So nice. And then bring your hands down to frame your right foot. You might wiggle walk it forward a little and then sink forward a little bit more. So now you find that stretch in the front of the hip, lift the heart. And then as you pull your hips back, I want you to pick your right toes up. So it's a half split. Now we don't want our hips to go all the way back towards our heel. I want your hips to almost be in line with your left knee, that same plane. So as you start to lift your right toes up off the ground, we think about, oh, we have to keep that right leg straight, right? It's like a half split. So splits mean our legs are straight. Now, actually, and we can do more work here by bending that right knee. Now, like you did before, I want you to think about your right heel and your left knee drawing together underneath you. 
notice what that does to your hamstrings. <laughs> for me, it's a lot of work. Like I'm almost shaking. Take one more breath in, reach your heart further forward. So nice. And then exhale, stay. Bend back into that right knee. We'll give it a break. Start to tuck your back toes and lift your knee up off the ground. Spin that heel down, rise up to warrior two. Straighten your legs, parallel your feet, facing the long edge of your mat. Maybe even heel toe them in a little bit closer. Now sweep your arms up and overhead. Find warrior two to the back of your mat. Your left knee will bend here. So after all of that work in flexion, that right hip was in front of you, right? Now you get to find the length of it, the length of that quad, the length of the hip. Maybe as you sink a little bit lower into that left knee, reverse your warrior, left hand will rise. Bring your left forearm to your left thigh, right arm alongside your ear for side angle. So nice, take one more breath in. Can you press down through your right foot and reach through your right fingertips? Back to warrior two. Now straighten the legs, parallel the feet. You can heel toe them a little closer if you wish. Start to bring your hands to your hips. Stand up really tall. See if you can softly bend your knee, it's 5%. Yeah, and then find that same engagement that you did whenever you were in mountain pose. Notice where the bowl of your pelvis wants to land. Let it be an active neutral. Take one more breath in right here. Press through all four corners of your feet. Hinge at your hips. Don't round through your upper back. Try not to round. Try not to round. Then drop your hands. Then drop your head. And now your spine gets to fall forward. So the origin of that fold is that your hips. Now, if you feel like your hamstrings are so loaded, maybe consider heel toeing your feet a little bit wider. But we don't want them to go so wide that we lose that engagement of the belly. Now, once you're here, I want you to find a halfway lift again. Breathe in. Start to bend your knees a little more and see if you can squeeze your quad muscles. See if your quads can turn on. Then refold, keep the quads engaged. So as we engage the quads, it's a little more work or it's a lot more work, but it protects our, the back of our legs. It protects our hamstrings a little more. So nice. And then halfway lift, see your right foot, frame it at the top of your mat into a lunge. Your left hand can stay, reach your right arm up, just find a twist. And then reach your right hand back forward. Let it land to frame your right. Your left knee comes back to the earth. Sweep the arms back up and overhead. Deep breath in. And now just a little bit different. Bend the elbows wide like goalposts. Take a breath in. Send the back of your hands and your forearms, your elbows back. And then exhale to bring them in front of your face. Slightly round the upper back. Do that one more time, inhale, open up. Notice how you can press down through that front foot for stability and then exhale to round. Keep the hands together, reach them up and overhead, big breath in and then bring your right knee to meet the left. Walk your hands forward into tabletop pose. I want you to send your right leg behind you but tuck your toes onto the earth. Now press back through your heel. So after all of that work, you get a little bit of a passive stretch here. Spin that right heel down and reach your right arm up. Take a breath in to open up to the right. And then exhale, right arm over your right ear. Now to intensify the side stretch here, Drape your right arm over your head. So like bend your right elbow. And then think about leading with your 
elbow. Deepen that stretch in between your ribs. Reach your right hand back up. Open through the chest. And then set your right hand back down, tabletop pose. Take a round of cat cow here. Lift through the heart, breathe in. Press down through your hands, round your upper back. Drop your head, cat. Walk your hands slightly forward and just come into a plank on your knees. Take a breath in right here and lower all the way down to your belly. Take your hands out a little wider, tent them, toes point back. And this time I want you to find the back of your legs working by squeezing your glutes. They won't turn on as much as they would in a forward fold, but I just want you to notice they still work. Take a breath in, lift your chest up. And then exhale, release. Keep pressing the tops of your feet down. Do that one more time, rise up. You may not come as high, notice that. That's okay. Exhale, lower. Hands into your shoulders. Press back to hands and knees. Find your child's pose for a moment. So in between, both right and left, we take a moment of pause. In this moment of stillness, a full inhale. Full exhale. And start to shift your way back forward. Hands and knees, tabletop pose. Walk your hands up your thighs, lifting through the chest. Sweep the arms out and up, deep breath in. Last time here to take the arms out like the letter T, palms forward. Send the back of your hands back, chest slightly opens up. And then exhale, bring the hands together in front of your face, arms long, reach them up and overhead. Flip the palms up as you interlace the fingers. Press them high and then send your left foot forward. So you're in that lunge. Notice how you wanna sink into it. I want you to pull it back and find that 90-90. Take one more inhale, press your hands higher. And then exhale, hands to your hips. Pausing here, just setting that up. And I really want you to press through the front big toe. For me, that's like a really big anchor point where I can send energy that then turns the rest of my leg on. Now with your hands on your hips, see if you can start to bring your right knee and your left heel towards one another. They don't actually touch, of course, they don't really even move, but it's just that energetic drawing in towards one another that turns the back of that left leg on and your quad muscles, your hips start to work. Then reach your hands up, take one big breath in, feel that working, feel the belly zip up. And then exhale to bring your hands down to frame your left foot. Readjust if you need to, heel to that foot, maybe a little forward for first. Take a breath in to broaden through the chest, shift the weight forward, and then exhale, pull the hips back and pick the left toes up. Now, readjust the foot to the point where you would like it to be. But, I didn't say this on the other side, the goal is to square your hips off or square your pelvis off to be parallel with the front of your mat. So, you don't want your left hip sneaking out. You don't want your right hip forward and your left hip back. You want them in line with one another. Take a breath in, soften that left knee, heart forward. And then exhale, think about left heel, right knee drawing together. It's just that like little bit of a shift but makes so much start to happen for three. Oh yeah, don't forget your breath. That's another thing to think of too. Last one, so nice. And then bend back into that left knee. So that was like a magic bonus pose. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee up. So in that shape, your hamstrings are lengthening and strengthening if we do it that way at the same time. Spin the back heel down, rise up to warrior two for a moment. 
Now straighten the legs parallel the feet, reaching the arms up and overhead, deep inhale. And then warrior two to the back of your mat for a moment. Your right knee gets to bend so that left hip can get longer after it's been all that time getting stronger. And then reverse your warrior, right hand rises. Side angle, forearm to your thigh, left arm over your ear. And press down through your left foot, reach through your left hand, back to warrior two. Straighten the legs, now parallel the feet. Reaching the hands up this time. Now, without your hands on your hips, soften your knees. See if you can start to hinge at the hips forward to find your forward fold. Once you've reached that point, then you get to round and drop your head, drop your hands. Maybe you bend one knee and then the other. And then come back to center, right? Start to think about your feet gluing to the ground. So sometimes we wanna send more weight towards our pinky toes. If that's the case, press your big toes down more. Think about the four corners of your feet. Are all of them grounding? Now use that energy to turn your quads on. Think about your quad muscles almost like lifting your kneecaps. Drop your head, halfway lift, big breath in. See your left foot, frame it at the top of your mat, low lunge, that back heel will lift up. Reach your left hand up, you get to twist to the left. Should feel nice. Left hand goes forward, let it land back on the earth. And then your right knee drops. Reach your arms up and overhead, deep breath in. Take your left hand to your right wrist this time and lean over to the left. Back up through center. Start to send your left knee to meet the right. And just one more time here, I just want you to send your right foot forward. Switch that grip, right hand to your left wrist. Lean over to the right. back up through center and then right knee comes to meet the left walk your hands to hands and knees tabletop pose and start to find any movement that feels good maybe it's cat and cow maybe it's c curve side to side Take your hands slightly for forward, shift your heart forward, coming into that plank shape and lower all the way onto your belly. Take your hands out a little wider. Last time, toes point back, actively squeeze the legs as you lift the chest and release back to the earth. Take that one more time, rise up, breathe in. Exhale, release. Hands underneath your shoulders. Come back to hands and knees first. And then send your left leg behind you. Let it float for a moment. Tuck the toes under, we can't miss it. You'll press back through that left heel. Feel that stretch in, not so much the hamstrings, but more so the lower leg. And then you get to spin that heel down, reach the left arm up. You'll open up to the left here. Reach left arm over your ear and let drape around your head. Think about leaning with that elbow. Reach back up, open through the chest. And then return to hands and knees tabletop pose and then start to find a seat when you're ready. Swing your legs around in front of you. One more active hamstring shape. So start to take your feet 
flat on the ground in front of you. Make sure you have enough space behind you. And then see if you can keep your feet flat, reach your hands forward, right? Now, I want you to start to think about your low back and round, if this feels okay for you, of course. And slowly, one vertebrae at a time, lower to the earth. See if you can keep your feet grounded as you do it. Now, as you take your arms down along your sides, walk your feet a little bit closer and think about how your ankles are right underneath your knees, your toes pointing forward. So setting up for bridge pose, but let it be active. Press down through your feet and then lift your seat. So I, want, I don't want it to come up or don't want you to come up as much as you can. So back off just a little and then press down through the four corners of your feet. See if you can turn the back of your legs on. Yeah, you can feel them working a little bit different once we start to notice the feet a little more. Take one more breath in. So nice, and then lower all the way back down to the ground. Take a moment of pause here. Bring your hands to your hips. And a full breath in to fill all the way up. Open up your mouth. Clear it out. Do that one more time. Breathe all the way in. All the way out. And heel toe your feet just a little bit further apart. Knock your knees together. So we find internal rotation of the thighs rather than external. And then slowly separate the knees. And if it feels good, one more like forward fold here, but we're on our back, so it's a little different. Take your knees maybe towards your armpits. You can hold on to your knees or your shins. If you wanna grab the feet, for happy baby pose, go for it. But whatever feels best for you, maybe a little rock side to side or stillness. One more breath in to hug the knees in. And let your legs go long towards the ground. Arms down along your sides. If you need any final shapes, of course, take them as you need them. And if you can, allow the eyes to gently close. Allow the back of your head to be heavy into the earth. And after all of that active work and that intentional engagement, a little like guided relaxation here to rest. So really see if you can bring your awareness to your toes and let them start to soften. The arches of your feet and your ankles. Let them soften. The muscles in your quads, the back of your legs, your hamstrings, your calves. The muscles in your knee and even in your hip. Allow them to soften. The muscles in your belly. Your chest and your shoulders. The 
your arms all the way down to the tips of your fingers, allow them to release. the back of your neck, the front of your throat and even your jaw, let them soften. The space in between your eyebrows and in your forehead and the top of your head. We'll let that soften as well. Just for the next few moments, let your whole body release and give yourself permission to rest. Take a breath in. Long breath out. Very slowly and intentionally, can you start to bring movement to your fingers and toes? Your wrists, your ankles. You even rock your head side to side. What's the number? Start to bend your knees and just roll to your side here and keep your eyes heavy. And just slowly press yourself up to a seat, sitting up nice and tall. Placing one shin in front of the other, the same shape that you actually started in. Maybe you notice it feels a little bit different. And you can bring your hands together right in front of your heart just as a way to thank yourself for putting in the work, knowing that of course no effort is ever wasted. So no matter what it looked like for you today, or even what it felt like. What can you take from this practice and integrate it into your life in some sort of way? Take one more breath in and out.